relativity step by step. Um, I've been talking quite a lot about the um, behaviour of dust particles, little particles here. Sometimes I call them atoms, sometimes I call them dust motes, sometimes, well, particles, atoms, maybe. Um, the important thing about uh, these particles is that they are conserved. The number doesn't change. Does not change. If there's 144 particles, there's always going to be 144 particles. These things don't... Uh, don't reproduce and they don't decay and they don't stop existing. They, they always maintain their identity. So effectively we're talking about combinatorics. So how do I express that fact there in uh, differential equations? Now that's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. Well, I'll set up a little control volume here. And basically what I'm going to do is to say that the... Well, let me, let me write it out. Let me just write it out. This number flux vector is n0, n1, n2, and n3, and those components themselves are n gamma, n gamma u, n gamma v, and n gamma w. So what I want to say is that di by di t of n0 equals... So what that is, is this is the rate of change in, a in, in time as measured by me of the number density of my particles in a little control volume here. Equals minus, well, the fluxes that come in and go out. So we've got fluxes going in and out. I can't draw it very well, but in the three direction. So it's just di n, I'll call it x by di x. I've just casually called it n0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I could just as easily have called it nt, nx, ny, and nz. Plus di ny by di y for the first term here. Well, I'll close the bracket too soon. Plus di nz by di z. And those are the differentials of the fluxes so we've got some stuff coming in this direction and more or less stuff going out and of course the difference is measured by this flux relationship here let me express that slightly differently di n0 by di oh, it should be a t by t plus di n x by di x plus di n y by di y plus di n z by di z equals zero and that is the statement of conservation of particle density or particles anyway well all right let me show you why this is interesting or why i like it it's because i can write it out like that remember einstein's summation convention gives me an implicit summation over repeated indices and I've got an index there and an index there, so we're summing over alpha, which is the sum over 1, 2, 3, 4 coordinates. And that statement there represents conservation of particles in a conservation equation format. Let me show you, this is the relativistic version. Let me just talk about classical equations now and what we get the classical equivalent of this statement here will be di n by di t plus the divergence of n u that's divergence equals zero look how complicated this is for a start we've got a summation of two apparently unrelated things we've got a rate of change of number density so you've got a, a, num, a classical number density n, you've got a speed u, you've got a di by di t, and you've got a gradient operator as well. So this is complicated. I spent years studying this. This is called the, well, it's called the advection equation. Um, actually, the advection equation is slightly different, but this is, this is close to the advection equation. So here we've got two complicated equations with a, a flux 
and the number density here is that a little card isn't this beautiful it's better in several ways for a start oh that equals zero of course that it's better in several ways it's better firstly because it's conceptually nice it's showing you that we've got this explicit summation here and we don't need a separate argument for what happens with respect to time because time is built into this as the first coordinate of the four vector it's nicer because we've only got one component to deal with we've only got one vector to deal with which is the number flux density rather than two com rather than two um, systems here we've, we've got um, a classical number density and a velocity field as well to deal with we've got simpler operators as well because we've just got this covariant operation let me just write out that again we've got alpha comma alpha I can say it's di n alpha by di x alpha plus Christoffel symbol get this right and that's constructed there we've got an alpha there and an alpha there okay and I'll give you a whole bunch of complicated um, simplifications complicated simplifications or uh, difficult to derive simplifications of the Christoffel symbol here so this equation here works whatever coordinate system you choose you could choose that silly h theta system. Remember the h theta system I had, where we had that theta, that was h, x and y was uh, h, and y was h tan theta. This system would work in those silly coordinates. So uh, this equation sort of works if you have uh, different coordinate systems, but it's quite difficult to... Um, it's quite difficult to re-express divergence in curvilinear coordinates, whereas the hard work's already been done for us by Christoffel in this case. So that on its own, this, this equation on its own, says to me that relativity, special relativity at least, is worth investigating. I think it's absolutely incredible. N alpha comma alpha equals zero represents conservation of particles. I think that's absolutely beautiful. That's a good place to stop. Stop. <laughs>